Welcome. If you're new here, my name is Marie. I like to make things and then I like to tell you how I made those things. Welcome to my channel. Today, what we're gonna be doing is, I have been trying to figure this out. I've been doing crochet for about 20 to 30 years. Yeah, that's how old I am. Let's just move on. I've been trying to figure out how to create graphs on my own, maybe using a couple apps and programs to do so. The kicker is I wanted to do it on my iPad because like I always like use my iPad for like everything. So I want to be able to try to create a grid that you can use for crochet, for graph gans, for pillows, um, to crochet like a little picture on um, a crochet pillow, a crochet shirt, um, a purse, or a blanket, maybe, I don't know. I'm not really a fan of blankets, but, um, and also tapestries or tapestries, tapestries, tapestries. I've been told that it was said both ways. I want to use my iPad to create grids for crochet patterns. Um, if this is what you want to learn about, then stay tuned. First, we're gonna start with our design. Where you get your design, that's up to you. I'm not gonna tell you where to get it, where you shouldn't get it. Um, but what I did was I drew up a little design of just a cat. So I was thinking that that will be a little simple project to do, a little simple picture to use to make a graph out of. What we're gonna start with first is we're gonna go to Knit Pro. One, I'm going to start with opening up Safari. Safari is the best thing to use. I do use Chrome sometimes, Chrome browser, but I suggest that you use um, Safari for this because it's easier for when you are downloading different things. I'll put the link to Knit Pro below because it's not exactly knitpro.com. It's microrevolt.org. This is Knit Pro 2.0. I never worked with 1.0, but here's 2.0. So you have a couple of things here. First thing that comes up, they say your grid size. What I like to stick to is just doing a regular one because later on I will get into how big you want your design and how small you want it. If you want it on a purse, if you want it on a shirt, if you want it to be a pillow or a tapestry or a tapestry or whatever it is, um, there's different sizes that you need. But for this project and for this tutorial, we are going to stick to the regular, which is 48 wide, 64 high. So when they say that, what that means is there's going to be 48 squares going across here, and then it's going to be 64 squares going up and down, okay? So we're gonna stick to the regular. And then it asks you next, it says stitch size. So you got needle point cross stitch or crochet. Obviously that's what we're doing. We're doing crochet. Next we are going to choose um, our file. And another thing that it says is that there is this donate button. So you can always come back to this after you had downloaded whatever you needed. Um, and come back and donate because when you donate, that keeps Knit Pro free for everybody. If there's like one or two people out of 10 that donates, that helps a whole bunch. So I've already donated, donated twice. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to hit choose file and I'm going to do photo library. Even though these two look the same, this one is a PNG and it gives me a black background because it is going to be transparent. And this one right here is a JPEG, so it's gonna be a white background. So we're gonna hit use. I am going to hit the submit button, which is above the donate button. As you can see, it has a little bit of imperfections in it. Around the edge, it's a little bit light and then there's a couple like little gray boxes also in there. So we're going to change that. Even you can see it around the eye. Um, and around the mouth. We're gonna have to fix all that because the mouth is just not, that ain't looking like a cat. I'm just saying, not looking like a cat. But that's okay, we can fix this. We are going to export this out. In my case, because this is the best way to use these apps, I kinda think, in my opinion, because when you use it on your iPad, you can edit 
whichever thing you want to do. If you're doing it on a computer, it's a little bit hard. You have to use Paint if you have Windows. You have to use Photoshop, whatever. And um, some of those things could get a little bit overwhelming, a little bit, a little bit hard to understand. We're going to try to keep this simple. So that's why I am using my iPad. We're going to hit this box. I believe this is the box I need to hit. Yes. And then I'm just going to export it out to my iBooks just really quick. And it's going to pop up in my iBooks. So I have the little graph here. So I'm going to make it a little bit larger. And believe it or not, I'm not using iBooks to edit this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to screenshot this really quick. So now I have a picture here. So I'm going to save this into my photos. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to open up my Procreate. I think I might just edit the photo itself. I'm just using the photo option really quick. That's just what I'm going to do for right now. And so I hit the arrow and what I'm going to do is I do this little thing. I think it's weird, but you know, I can do what I want. I do this little thing where I hit the arrow and if you feel that you have some extras, on your picture here. This may sound really crazy, but to me, it's the quickest way for me to get a crop going. So what I do is, this is the whole canvas. You could tell that this is the canvas because it's starting to turn white over here. So what I like to do is I'm trying to crop out these black lines. And so I'm just gonna go like this. I'm gonna move it over to the side. I'm gonna pay attention to what my bottom's doing, make sure everything's in it. And what my top is doing everything's in it that i want and so i'm going to hit the arrow again and then i'm going to hit it again and that part is gone so now i don't have that black that black um, bar so now i'm going to do the same thing for the other side i just push it over as far as i would like it pay attention to the bottom And then I'm going to hit the arrow again. So now I just have my graph now. That's just my little quick edit thing that I do. It's a little, it's a little weird. So now I can look at my picture. I can look at all the little imperfections in it. We're looking at it. We can see the colors. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to click and get myself another layer on top of this layer. I am going to go into my brushes. Now in my brushes, I have... Look at my little kitty. Kitty. So I actually created a little pixel brush. I used a monoline brush. I just changed the shape of it. So I made a little pix pixel brush. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put that in the description box below for free. Take it. Have fun with it. You can make some pixel art with it. It's free. So that's if you're using Procreate and it's called... I named it pixel monoline brush because I am full of bright ideas. So pixel monoline brush. So I'm going to grab that really quick. Now we have our, our little layer here. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to eye drop the right teal blue. And then I'm going to play around with my pixel brush real quick. All right, it's perfect. So now I have the perfect size of my pixel brush where it really does as you can see, it's kind of like a little stamp, like you can stamp a square. So now that I have my new layer here on top of this layer, I could stamp all this. I can stamp whatever colors I want. Like I might even take the eyeballs and change them into a different color. But for right now, I'm going to work on my edge. And another thing that um, you want to keep in mind, if you find that there's a couple boxes in here that um, are a little grayish and or a little bit on the side where you're like, oh, I really don't, I want that to be a white box. Don't go and try to choose a white on your color wheel. It's best if you take and you eye drop an obviously white box and then use that as a white. So for right now, I'm gonna start filling these boxes in that I think should be teal blue. And I'll show you the result afterwards. Okay, so I filled in the outside 
of the head. And I think that for the eyes, I'm just going to choose a black. Ooh, this is another shortcut for um, Procreate, for Procreate users. This only works for the color wheel. If you tap near the white and you double tap it, it automatically goes to white. Black, same thing. Let's say I'll double tap here, I'll double tap here, automatically goes to black. So there you go. So that's a little, little tip. So what I'm going to do for the eyes real quick is I'm going to fill in the eyes with black. The thing about another thing too is how to pixelate. It's like you literally have to look at it, go like this, look at it, go like this, zoom it in, fill in what you want and just, because what I'm trying to do is create a circle. I also found that um, with this pixelated brush that if you take and you are filling in the black or filling in your square, that if you put your pen dot, just dot like as close to the middle of the square as you can, that seems to work better for me. So when you zoom out, it's, pixelated is basically what you would see if you had a picture and you're trying to make it as large as possible. And then when you try to make it as large as possible, if it started out really small and you try to make it as large as possible, when you do that and you look at it, it's pixelated all around the edge. Just these little squares that are trying to replicate and trying to duplicate is as closely as possible to the original picture as it could. So that's what pixelated really is. So when you zoom out of this, this looks like a circle. What? When you zoom in, you're like, oh my God, what is that? It's, what is that? So that's what pixelated is. So, so now what I'm going to do, I mean, it's not like I'm going to get confused or anything. It's just for aesthetic purposes because it's bothering me. I'm going to fill in these, a couple of these teal blue squares because they're annoying the heck out of me. So there you go. There you have it. So I'm going to do that same thing for this eye. Okay. So doesn't look perfect, but you know, zoom out. It's two little kitty eyeballs and they look fairly even. So I tried to keep it um, the same on both sides, you know, three squares over, then I went five and then I went, what is this, seven and repeated it twice because that's like the middle of the circle. And then I'm basically repeating the top part and I did it on the bottom where you have five and then three. So I did that for both sides and I tried to keep them about the same because otherwise you'll have one eye bigger than the other. Like what I have. Yay. For the most part, this technique is pretty easy to use if you're doing it for yourself. It does this, it does this trick. I'm gonna try to do something for the, the nose. I'm not exactly sure how I'm gonna do this, but we're, we're, gonna, we're gonna figure this out. We always figure it out, okay? Hold on a second. Oh, and another thing with Procreate, if you hold down your, your pen on the color dot, it switches between the two colors that you've been using. So it will switch back and forth between two colors and that is pretty dope. So with a nose, it's like bigger on the top. And another thing with this brush is that you if you're not exactly filling the square, you can just move it. You can just nudge it over a little bit. It still will have the square shape. Like I'm gonna do that with this black one right here because it's not exactly filling in the square. So there you go. So I like that. We have our little kitty nose. And you know what? Frankly, 
I don't think you need his little lips. So I think I'm going to leave it like that. So that is one technique with Knit Pro. Now, the second thing that I wanted to use was Stitch Fiddle. Now, Stitch Fiddle, is that right? It's Stitch Fiddle, right? Yes, it is Stitch Fiddle. Okay. I paid the $5 for Stitch Fiddle because I wanted to make sure that I got all the features. One of the features I think was XML, uh, X. I think it's an Excel spreadsheet. There it was. I knew I'll get it eventually. So I had an Excel spreadsheet that I wanted to do. So I did Stitch Fiddle and I paid the $5 so that I can get that spreadsheet. And um, so I think that was one of the things that I couldn't do. And if you have a business, paying $5 for Stitch Fiddle is like a drop in a bucket, really. $5, th this, this um, program is very, very robust. I love it. So I paid that $5 so that I had um, all the features that it offers with Stitch Fiddle. All it is is going to stitchfiddle.com. I have my own account. I love this program because it's so easy to understand. These are, these are the ones that I did in the past and um, just playing around with it, seeing how it works and all that good jazz. To start, you just hit this plus one and it says underneath it, create new. From there, you have, it asks you different questions about what type of chart you want to create. So in our case, we are creating a crochet chart again now they had these different crochet things it says corner to corner c to c crochet with colors tunisian crochet freeform whatever we're not doing any of those except for crochet with colors so it says the reason why i'm picking that is because it says graph gan pixel crochet picture crochet and i think this is about what we're doing here so i'm going to click that box so from there it asks you how you want to start and you say from a picture empty chart or create a QR code didn't know they do create QR codes I you know when I went there I was like QR codes that's pretty awesome if I want to create a QR code oh that's interesting hmm so what we're gonna do is you apparently okay I have not tried this for the sake of this video I ain't trying to try it okay you can have an empty chart what you say that's why i paid the five dollars okay then you have from a picture so that's what we're going to do i'm going to click that box and then it says from a picture and i'm going to click that little camera thing click photos and then i'm going to i think this is the one that was the jpeg and i'm going to use that what we're going to click here now this is the part where you're like okay what am i creating am i creating something that will go on a shirt am i creating something will go on a bag or a pillow or as i always say it's your world okay so in my case i think what i am going to crochet is i am going to crochet a pillow size now a pillow size is it's a square okay meaning it is the same on all sides so what i'm going to do is want to see they have this little size stitch count thing and it seems to oh it goes down to 20 and you see how when you hit that 20 you see how you start to lose that detail it's the bigger you go square size the more detail you get okay so if i did do in the 50 mile thing here i i get more detail that's pretty awesome see like so when the squares get smaller you start to get more rounded so i'm trying to do a pillow so i'm not trying to do 204 squares going up and 204 squares going this way it ain't gonna happen i'm not trying to do a blanket so i think this is really good this is a really good program to use if you're trying to do a graph gan for an afghan of some sort or blanket so in my case i'm just doing a pillow so i'm going to try to get this Oh, shut up, shut the front door, get out and shut the front door. So click the box and you can put in there what you want. So I think for a pillow, I did 70 by 70. And so it would keep it at 70 by 70. And then we have 
our detail here. I, I like the detail that we have. We're getting for 70. Um, 100 would be better, but then that would be a big darn pillow. And we ain't trying to make a big darn pillow. So 70 is good of a stitch count for using a five millimeter hook, say, because that's what I'm going to be using, a five millimeter hook. I got 70 by 70 right here. And so gauge all that good jazz. I'm not trying to do all that. And then this is another thing that I noticed. They said, this says um, colors, color amounts. So it looks like I'm trying to do, what if I'm doing like two colors? What will happen? <gasps> it takes those squares out. Again, shut the front door. I'm telling you $5, $5 goes far. As you can see here, this is what we're getting. So I'm getting two colors. Now, the two colors that it chooses is probably the one that has the most. So I had a little bit of like really light teal blue around these edges here. And so it was like, okay, we're not gonna pick that color of the one, two colors that we're gonna use. So we had a lot of white and a lot of dark teal. So it's just gonna keep those two colors. Now, if I did three, I'm sure it's going to throw in, it's going to throw in some teal blue. I could see some light, some light teal blues right here. Yeah. So we're going to stick to two colors and I'm going to get that out of the way. So now from here, we're not going to have the grid just yet. Okay. So now I, I noticed that here at the bottom, it says, um, Ooh, I turned the contrast up. I don't want to do that. Okay, it says, if the result looks fuzzy, then the picture probably is too detailed. Try multiple different pictures to discover what kind of images works well. I like that little tip there. Okay, so now, oh, oh I, I know I messed up the contrast here. Let's turn it up a smidgel. There we go. So now we have our cute little kitty here. It's for now, it's just the kitty. So I'm going to hit save chart right here. And then what it does, it opens up like an editing program here. You have a pen here that's like an editing pen. So basically in this program, you can do all the edits that you want. From here, I'm gonna hit this. On this side here, you can see that it has all these different teal blues. Apparently you can click on these, right? And you can actually remove these colors. I'm gonna move, remove these colors. So delete, I'm going to delete this one, replace or delete. So go, I'm going to go here and I'm going to remove and then I'm clicking, I think this one. Yep. And they start to disappear over here. So, I mean, these teal blues are fairly close together. Okay, so now I only have these two teal blue, this, this two colors. I have white and I have teal blue. I'm looking at this, I kind of like it, but what I am going to edit while I'm in this program real quick is I'm going to choose white here. And you can tell it's chosen because it turns black around the edge and I'm gonna put a little white right there, okay? If I'm looking at this right, one eye is bigger than the other. <laughs> kind of like my eyes. <laughs> Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit teal blue and I'm going to just, you can click in the general direction of the actual um, square and that's about it. And so I'm just trying to make, make it like look the same. So I'm gonna choose white, click that in there. Okay, okay. How you looking, how you looking. Okay, so I need white right here. So I'm comparing the two eyes to make sure they look quite similar. I'm not trying to get all deep into the business of grafting, but I kind of like the way this looks because that's this is what is going to look like on your pillow. Not rounded edges, but it's just those little brick looking. But when you look at it from far away, you put that pillow on the couch and it's got a little cat shape on it. Far away, you look at it, you're like, oh, look at the little cat pillow. It doesn't have to be perfect. That's what I like about crochet. It's like, you look at it and I'm like, look at it from far, I'm like, that's a cat. That's usually what graphs look like. So 
I mean, this cat does look a little, he look a little mad. I mean, cats always do look a little mad sometimes, you know. So I'm going to do a little white on the bottom here. There. Now he looks like, hi, I'm a cat. So yeah, made that a little better. All right, so from here, we are going to take and hit the save, which is this little disc looking thing. And it then it gives you a little check mark to let you know that it's saved into your little cloud that they give you. And then I'm going to hit this folder, which shows me all my designs and it's right here. Now, which I think you can um, change the name of. How do you change the name of? Yes, you can. So I wanna say, I wanna say, I'm gonna call it a happy kitty. Okay, and hit apply. I'm gonna go back to the folders and it's named as happy kitty. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm gonna click right next to the name of it it has these three little dots. You click on that and it gives you all these different choices. So you can either view it, edit it, whatever, or download it. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm gonna hit download. So now here's the part that I gotta, I'm gonna struggle a little bit with because it gives you a couple options that are like, wait, hold on, what? I'm just gonna look at this really quick. I struggled because um, I had to figure out first about the PDF thing. So it says file type. And if you hit the drop down, what I did at first was I downloaded a PDF and it says printable document. Meaning when you print it out, it's not gonna fit on one sheet of paper. So it's going to fit on about four sheets of paper and they all, you, when you lay them out flat, you can tape them together and they will all complete one chart. If you were doing a blanket, it will definitely do that. And that is okay, but I really didn't care for that because <laughs> I'm not, I don't need it to be that way. And besides, I need it to be digital so that I can look at my patterns digitally, which I do all the time. So if you want to print it out, you would print it out with the printable um, document PDF thing here. But here's the one thing I discovered is if you hit PDF cropped, it will put it all on one PDF, one, one page, okay? And so I was using S, um, Microsoft Excel for something else, um, so, but they don't allow you to do that if you don't pay the $5 monthly fee thing. So for this project, I'm going to do PDF cropped. If that's what you want to do, you want to save your pattern digitally. I can't say digitally for some reason on camera, but I can say it if I'm not looking at the camera digitally. Nope. Sounds the same. Anyway. So if you want to save it in a digital form, that's better do the PDF cropped. So that's what I did. And then it will ask me all these other crazy things that I really don't care about. Um, I don't know. I don't care about the quality legend edit grid grid lines. It says one page. It says, you know, all that good stuff. It has the grid included on it. So I'm going to hit apply because that's going to start downloading my PDF, which is a crop version. And so it pops up on my screen like this. It says, you know, do you want to download Happy Kitty? And I said, yes, please. So I'm going to hit download. And so this little thing bounces. It lets you know that it's downloading or downloaded because it really is not that big of a file. And so it should appear here. And it's only 20 kilobytes, so that's yay. So I'm going to open it up right here. And so as you can tell, you know, you have your little, the title at the top, which is really cute. Um, you have your edited version. And then what I'm going to do is I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna open up in iBooks. And there it is. It actually says Happy Kitty, how cute. Okay, so now that we got knit pro and stitch fiddle out of the way a third way that you can use your ipad to create grids is this is something that i can't take credit for finding this 
I was, you know how sometimes when you're talking to your husband, you're like, me, 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 me. You kind of feel like when you talk, that's all he hears. Sometimes that is true. It just so happened that I was talking to him about how, you know, it seems like this is just such a simple thing. Why can't I figure out other ways to create a grid um, for my crochet patterns? And he was like, oh, and of course, he's the type of guy that is like, you got a problem, yo, I'll solve it. And then literally he solves the problem. Like, he's amazing. So he said, ooh, I found this little app that you get in the app store for 99 cents, y'all. 99 cents, and it's called Grid Maker. And it's by NNN Software. I mean, 99 cents. I think, I think, you, I think you guys can afford 99 cents. So this is the icon right here. And um, it's a simple, to me when I saw it, I was like, oh, I didn't open it immediately. I went to make waffles. Uh, when you open it, they have all these little magical little icon things. And I'm like, I don't know what any of these are. So I just picked grid. Seemed easy enough. I already created one grid, but we are going to create a grid together. To do that, you start with hitting the plus symbol. So you get this little generic little box. Um, yeah, it's nothing special. And for some reason it's cocked over to the side. I don't know what that's all about. But anyway, the first step that I found is when you see this, they have these little symbols on the side. We're gonna zoom in on those. So this symbol right here, this number one, it's just basically telling you it's just gonna be a one box thing. And then there's another box that has two and another box that has three. The two and the three we're not gonna use because this is what happens when you click the two. You get extra lines in there inside the squares and I don't, I just didn't do that. So I turned that off. So when I click the one, it says here, I have it at square one, one, and that's exactly what you want. You wanna make sure it's toggled on, leave the columns and rows alone, pick a color. So I picked the color and then a line, I, you know, you can change this over time. So I just put whatever generically was there. And then for um, this right here, I don't, I wanna say that this is going to be the size of the squares. And so I made sure that it's at 110. It's at one half inch right now. So I'm doing 110 of an inch. So I'm going to make them smaller and not spit on my iPad, that would be great. Um, so I have it at 110. So this is what I want. I got this nice little, these little tiny boxes because basically whenever I have a grid, I know it's gonna be that size. Then I went down into this symbol. A lot of these other symbols, this is not something that we're gonna be using to create our grids. This is just basically putting, this is just changing the way that it looks. It's just not, not feasible. We don't need this. We don't need this. This is just gonna be a little, little T shape in the middle of your grid, we don't need that. This right here is just gonna add diagonal lines, we don't need that. And then, so this is the symbol, this is the uh, icon you're going to click here. Basically, this is going to be where your numbers are gonna go. So first, I'm just gonna pick a color, generic color. Um, and then I go down to, it says label between lines because right now the number is like on just a line and they're skipping. So we're going to change that over time. So I like to cl click this symbol because then it puts the numbers over here. If you can see there's a little zero there, that means that the numbers are going to be on this side and going up and going, going across right here. So I'm gonna click that. Otherwise, the numbers will be putting exactly where you click them. So it's gonna change it. It's gonna go from zero down, but with this one, it goes from zero up, okay? So then we are going to change the numbers. And so it says zero is the start number, and that's not what we want. So we wanna start with one. So I'm gonna hit plus, and it starts with one. Same thing with the numbers that are going up. We're gonna start with one. And as you can see, the, the zero right here, 
you hit plus, it goes away, it turns to one. So that's what we want. And I noticed that I needed to have this toggled on. I don't know if I said that, because if you toggle it off, then you have these spaces in the, the numbers jump. So make sure you have this toggled on. So then, of course, so now you have your separate numbers on each square in between the lines, not on the lines. So the next thing I'm going to do, even though we're going to, I'm going to skip a couple here because we don't need these just yet. So I want to change the page settings. So I'm going to click on that. Then I'm going to go to custom. And then all these numbers right here, I literally, I, I kid you not guys, I literally was pushing plus, 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 minus, 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 plus, 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 and all these different things to get my page just right. But guess what? If you want to create a um, basic square um, canvas, a basic square grid, these are the settings that I came up with. Basically, if you're trying to change, um, you're trying to get a certain type of grid, this is the page that you need. These are the settings that you need to change. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you the settings that I put in there. These settings are for a pillow. So because that's what I want to do. I want to create a pillow. So then we have this nice little grid going on here. Okay. So that's how easy it was for me to create a grid for, um, a pillow. So when I created the grid for the pillow, it's just a square, meaning that both sides are the same. So what ended up happening, if you zoom in for a square, I normally do 70 squares, um, by 70 squares. But for some reason, as I was going through this, this was the closest I can get to 70 squares, which was 71 squares. I'm okay with one more row and one more square. It's really no big deal, okay? So I just left it at that. It's even on all sides. It's gonna be a square, okay? Now the next step, which I like this step, it was very easy to do. So the next step, I went and I created this snake plant. I realized when I was doing my grids with the other programs and apps that I really didn't want a pillow on my couch that was that had a picture of a cat. It just wasn't going with my decor. Okay, I have a decor that I'm trying to stick to here. So I decided to draw this snake plant. So I like to do projects and show you guys how I did it, but I also wanna do projects that I actually use so that you guys can see what it looks like on my couch after I get done. I'm gonna take that snake plant picture and I'm going to add it into this grid. I don't know why, I just found this part to be really fun. So of course you are going to hit this little thing. It looks like a picture. So hit it. And then it says add image. Now, if you're open up this app for the very first time, it's gonna ask you to give it access to all your photos or select few of your photos. I suggest just giving it permission to use all your photos. So that's what I did. Um, so now I can just go and hit add image. And so I have my little cactus here. I didn't like the other, I didn't like the other cactus that I drew and I said a snake plant would look better. So now you have this picture here. And so you have these little settings and basically this is going to change the overall the overall size of the picture. So I'm gonna, I'm just gonna make it a little bit smaller. You can change that if you want to. These two right here are gonna change the position of your photo. So I'm gonna hit negatives to get it into the grid. And then I'm going to hit plus, and it basically hit plus negative just to see where your uh, picture is going to move around on your grid. So that's what I'm doing. So once I get it kind of in the middle, which is in the middle right now, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to increase the size of it so that it can fill in this grid. So I'm gonna hit plus until it fills the grid. And I like the way that the bottom looks, but you know, I might wanna add a little bit of white in there. So I'm just gonna hit negative on the size of the overall picture in the background. So you got that, that looks great and everything. I'm gonna zoom in and you can see the grid. But what I did notice though, um, this is this is the one thing that I think that this app could um, improve on is that I wish that there was a way 
that I can stop spitting on my iPad. That would be great. I wish there was a way that you can hit the pen and edit each square and fill them in and pixelate it in this app, like Stitch Fiddle. But they don't have that option in this app. But I wanted to show you something that I thought was pretty interesting. As you can see, the grid is like green. It's just not a traditional look of a grid. If you can go down to this little palette, it's a little palette thing. It has little circles on it and it looks like that looks like that has something to do with color. So I click on that, right? They have these default colors in here. There is a, a setting that is about right here that gives you um, more squares. And so when it gives you more squares, it gives you a different color per square. So I think that's what all those colors represent. Actually, they have all these palettes that are built in there. And the very first color is what's gonna be your grid color. And so I went and I found a dark one, which that little, that color square right there, that first one is black. So I changed the grid that way. What I need to do from this point is just export this grid out. So that's what I'm going to do. To do that, you would have to hit at the top here, there's a circle and it has three dots in it. So click the circle with the three dots and it gives you all these different settings. And then you can share it and you can save it to your files. In my case, I'm gonna save it to downloads. I save everything to downloads. That's why my downloads are so full. So anyway, so you can change the name of it real quick and I'm going to change it to, um, what is this? This is a snake plant. So I'm gonna change it to snake plant. I hate the fact that the next word isn't always capitalized like, who, who writes like that but anyway and I'm gonna hit done and I'm gonna save and it goes to my files then from there I can just open up my procreate you can use our pixelated brush that you can get for free down in the description box below and then you can start filling in those squares if you'd like I think for my next video what I'm going to do is I'm going to take um, this grid this grid of the snake plant in my next video in the series um, I'm going to, I'm going to have the videos, both videos will be done at the same time. So it will be linked at the top of this video, um, up here, and then it will be linked in the description box below. Um, it will be linked in the comments and be everywhere. So you guys don't have to ask. It's always going to be there where, um, it will link to me crocheting this and showing you how to crochet how to finish off, how to be able to read the graph itself um, and also read the graph backwards. What? Yes, read the graph backwards so that you're not cutting off your yarn and then going to the beginning and then, you know, cut, go into the end, cut your yarn, go to the beginning and then add your yarn again. No, we're going to, we're going to go back and forth like you would a typical blanket, a typical crochet item. So I'm gonna show you how to read the graph backwards and to crochet using the graph and how to finish your project off. So that's what we're gonna learn in the next video. Um, so of course, you guys, I wanted to let you know that I appreciate you so much and I'm so glad you're here. So glad you were able to find this, this video because you guys find in this video just makes my world just turn it makes my channel keep going let me know when i see the views it lets me know that you guys are appreciating the content i'm putting out there that's cool also um i like to put in the description box below um any links affiliate links to things that you might need to finish these projects or you might need to be able to do these projects in general. So I make sure I put that in the description box below. I also put in the description box below different links to things that you guys can buy to help my channel keep going. Like I have like these earrings and stuff like that. Um, I have t-shirts um, that I drew up using some of the tutorials that I put on this channel and I actually made create um, made t-shirts out of those um, designs and you guys when you buy those it keeps my channel running it makes it so that I can take that 
bit of income and put it into this channel to keep it running and keep it looking beautiful so that you guys can follow along and we won't have any gaps in your creativity, right? If you're ever curious about where to find all these different graph makers, I put it in the description box below. Um, I also put there my social media handles, all that stuff. Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, which I'm never on. Facebook, did I mention that? Well, all that stuff, I always put in the description box below. I never leave you guys hanging. Like really, go to the description box below. It's there for a reason. It's there to give you all the needed information. It might even have some information that I did not put in the video because sometimes I'll be like, blah, 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 and I don't remember to mention these things. But what I do remember mentioning is how much I love you guys how glad I am that you are here watching this video. So glad that you found me and I hope you enjoy it. I try not to forget to say, please like this video. If you, if you feel like, oh, I don't want to subscribe because that's not exactly what I'm here for, that's okay. But you enjoy the video, then like the video. When you like that video, that helps me out tremendously. And as always, you guys, I'll see you in the next video. Bye. one video okay so we're gonna get that video out of the way okay. all right oh <laughs> you're still running <laughs>